Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Well, it's now official. Turkey's applied to join the Bricks after months of hints and statements by the Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Figen and Nizhny Novgorod at the Bricks Foreign Ministers meeting and the Prime Minister Recep Erdogan in his previous statements. They've now officially applied to join the organisation. Now, is this a significant geopolitical development that suggests the emergence of a new global centre of influence? Or a new paradigm where projects spearheaded by Russia, China and India are gaining traction? Well, these are some of the phrases used by experts to assess the reports that Turkey's submitted is its official application to join BRICS. Now, Turkey's inclusion into BRICS would undoubtedly be advantageous for Russia. However, it's unclear what the Turkish leadership's actual intentions are. I mean, is it a response to the EU again about Turkey's lack of membership progress after three decades? I mean, it's reported that Turkey's now officially applied to join BRICS after being invited to the EU meeting in Brussels. Now, media reports that Ankara's objective is to build alliances beyond the West and to increase its global influence and establish new ties below, beyond its traditional Western allies. In other words, the objective is to diversify its international context. The Turkish leadership is aware that the global landscape is evolving and changing and the traditional concept of the Western world domination is no longer the main game to be involved in. They say, therefore, it's essential to keep pace with the developments in international relations and maintain a good standing with emerging non-Western powers, according to Vladimir Atakov, who's a director of clinical science and head of the Department of Near and Post-Soviet East at the Institute of Scientific uh, Information at the Russian Academy of Sciences. Now, from this perspective, BRICS represents an optimal choice. It's an organisation that, in contrast to several regional formats that currently exist, it now includes the majority of the leaders of leading countries and leaders from the collective non-Western bloc. I mean, the BRICS organisation is not focused on any specific type of activity, but has a universal agenda, unlike its little brother, the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation, whose focus is mainly the security in Central Asia. Most importantly, it's an organisation that, unlike AUKUS, NATO, uh, etc., doesn't have a specific target and presents a constructive rather than a destructive image. To clarify the point, it does not compel sovereign nations to engage in conflict with third parties like the US dominated warmongering NATO does. The objectives of BRICS and Turkey with regard to multipolarity are aligned. Ankara has stated that the global landscape extends beyond the five permanent members of the UN Security Council and is pursuing an agenda to enhance the representation, representation of non-Western countries in the international system. I mean, first and foremost, it benefits the organisation itself, but in general, this goal aligns with the BRICS member countries, according to Vladimir Avakov. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. Now, you can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates gets a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you now for just watching because I do appreciate it. Now, Russia stands to gain from Turkey's request. From its perspective, any shift in Turkey's approach away from a Western-centric mindset is a positive development. It also provides additional avenues for engagement with the Turkish Republic, according to Mr. Avakov. Now, the prospect of Turkish membership is actually a more complex issue. Now, firstly, it should be noticed that BRICS has recently expanded from five to ten members, and that was as of January the 1st. Secondly, the admission of each new member state presents both opportunities and challenges in the process of deepening integration. And thirdly, Turkey remains a key player in the West. Its involvement in BRICS due to the consensus-based organisation like BRICS could impede the organisation's developing a number of areas. 
Nevertheless, there's a possibility that the risk will not materialise. Furthermore, as the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov recently observed, the majority of member states have chosen to temporarily refrain from admitting new members, allowing for a period of adjustment and integration. Additionally, there's a possibility that Turkey may encounter challenges with some of its current partners. Current, Turkey's current dual track approach to relations with the East and the West offers Ankara a number of opportunities but does carry a degree of risk. I mean the desire expressed to join BRICS will clearly not be welcomed in Washington which is already not too happy with the increasingly independent policy of the Turkish president Recep Erdogan according to Avakov. Now, from a practical standpoint, it appears that Turkey's entry into the BRICS doesn't present any obstacles for the United States. I mean, Ankara will still continue to fulfil its role within NATO, maintain American bases, including nuclear weapons, and perform a number of functions as a useful idiot for the United States. However, from an imaging geopolitical standpoint, Ankara's application re represents a significant challenge to Washington's global positions. Turkey's application to join BRICS represents a significant geopolitical development, suggesting the emergence of a new global centre of influence. It's akin to a crystal and it's starting to attract the new members with its light. A new reality is emerging where projects such as this SCO and BRICS are gaining traction. Now, Turkey is investing significant resources and political capital over the years into its EU membership bid. And now it's in pursuing a, a different strategy, according to An Andre Klinsip, who is the head of the Center of Study of Military and Political Conflicts. I mean, in essence, the US is facing a situation now where its most autonomous allies, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, and now Turkey, are defecting to a platform that's not aligned with any of Washington's interests. In fact, it's designed to have uh, allegedly anti-Washington. And that's not a temporary phenomenon, it's a long-term trend. The appeal of the West and the American-dominated uh, organisations is over. They were prepared to accept this situation because of the previous economic benefits, but now the West is pouring more and more restrictions and offering very little in return. It's focusing on ideology and there's little appetite amongst Eastern countries for the ideas of their more unconventional nature. I mean, it's to be expected that the US will attempt to reverse this trend, at least in the case of Turkey. They'll utilise both sanctions pressure and collaboration with key individuals. It's unlikely that the desire to join BRICS originated within Erdogan's entourage, but there's a distinct lack of enthusiasm for BRICS among others in Turkey, including the AKP, the Kemalists and the Nationalists. Now, the Kemalists currently adopt a very pro-Western stance. It's unlikely to countenance a departure from the NATO line. As for the nationalists, they'll be ready to consider the non-West as an opportunity to expand their own influence in this area. However, BRICS is not a vehicle for the expansion of influence of any member state. Rather, it's a board of directors where the influence of some members is balanced in a civilised manner at the expense of others. Now, according to Ant Andrei Klitsevich, it's said that the BRICS is a consultative platform where countries agree not to compete with each other, including through economic means, but it's about cooperation. And it may be the case that the current approach from Ankara is not genuinely aimed at joining the BRICS, but presents an East strategic Eastern looking bargaining move, which Herdegan, let's be honest, has considerable experience. It could be what we're seeing is a political gesture, the content of which may not be entirely clear and may not align with what we're initially expecting. I mean, this may be why Sergei Lavrov spoke about a pause with new members. He said this pause allows BRICS candidates to demonstrate the seriousness of their intentions. And it's precisely in these cases that such confirmations are needed. So let's see what happens and unfolds at the BRICS summit in Kazan in six weeks' time. 
such a lot to look forward to and what an event anyway thank you for watching please like and subscribe and if you've enjoyed this video you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricks.com by clicking on the thanks button don't forget the comments i do love all your comments and i'll get back to as many of you as i can thank you